Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss how to drink and how not to drink like a gentleman. Drinking, and by that I mean alcoholic beverages, can be a pleasure, a social expectation, or tricky at times because it may damage your reputation. For example, the office holiday party almost always produces some gossip because some people had a drink too much. The same goes for weddings or business dinners. You don't want to be the guy that ruins the evening for everyone or be responsible for not closing the deal. So here's the thing. Ideally, a gentleman never gets drunk because a gentleman should never lose control of his faculties. Now, that's easier said than done, and I certainly have been drunk before. In particular, there was one instance when I was about 18 or 19 years old. It was at a party, and I drank a lot. I passed out, and I couldn't remember a thing anymore. But when I talked to my friend the next morning, he told me that I had puked on his leg. I've never been as embarrassed before, and I never had as much to drink thereafter. So even if you're not wasted to this degree, being intoxicated always has an impact on how you behave and how you're perceived. The truth is, we're never at our best behavior when intoxicated, and the potential of long-term regret outweighs the pleasure of one night on a town. To top it all off, everyone has a smartphone these days, and they take photos and videos, and they may end up getting to your employer, your mom, or to that uncle who had you in his will. So the main goal of drinking like a gentleman is to enjoy yourselves while still be civil and in full control of yourself. That being said, here are eight practical tips that you can apply when you go out and drink. Most importantly, know your limit. Everyone has different reactions to the amount of alcohol they drink, and it's up to you to know what is acceptable and what is too much. For you, that may mean one drink an hour. Maybe you can do more, maybe you can do less. Maybe you'll always have to eat something before you drink, or maybe you abstain completely. Two, stick with the classics. Most bartenders will be able to mix up a gin and tonic or an old fashioned. Moreover, keep in mind a gentleman drinks his beverage from a cup or a glass, not from the can or the bottle. Personally, my drink of choice is a Manhattan, which usually consists of a rye whiskey with some red vermouth, some bitters, maybe a maraschino cherry, and a little bit of an orange peel or grapefruit peel. I have this go-to drink because I've had it many times before. I know how strong it is and I know how to pace myself. Generally, most whiskeys have about the same strength unless they're cask strength. And because of that, it's best to always order your specific whiskey. In this case, it would be, I'd like to have a Manhattan on the rocks with Crown Royal Rye Whiskey. Now, if a bartender doesn't have that bottle, ask them what they have and you may come up with something that's okay, or you go with something that's very widely available, like a Bullet Rye, or maybe a Woodford Reserve, or Maker's Mark. Of course, you can also go ahead and order a Blue Hawaiian, a Pina Colada, or a Strawberry Daiquiri. The problem is, with those drinks, they contain a lot of sugar. Also, the recipes are different, so the amount of liquor in them can vary considerably. On top of that, most people don't associate a pina colada with a gentleman. That being said, if you're confident and secure, you can drink whatever you want. You don't have to care about what other people think of you. Let's say you're at the bar and you fancy one of their craft cocktails. Go ahead and order it, but then stick with a known entity thereafter. Let's say you're at a sports bar or at a baseball game. It's not a time to order a French 75. Instead, you go with a flow and order a beer. Likewise, if you're at a fine establishment, it's not the time to order Milwaukee's best beer or Bud Light. Four, pace yourself. You're under no obligation to keep up with how much other people are drinking. Ideally, you can establish your own pace, and one of the best ways to fend off questions for another drink is to simply have your glass half full. If you don't want to drink at all, that's totally fine. You may be on a prescription medication, you don't drink for religious reasons, or you just don't feel like it today. If you still don't want to explain yourself all the time while you're not drinking, ideally just order a lime and soda with some ice, ideally in a highball, that way it looks like a gin and tonic and nobody will bug you. Five, be immune to peer pressure. And honestly, that's one of the hardest things for most men. Most people like to drink, enjoy doing so in company, 
And that may mean that they will bug you consistently and you'll just have to be firm and say no multiple times if necessary. There's no need to explain yourself. You can just say, no thanks, I've had enough for tonight. Simply repeat if required. Six, in the same vein, don't push drinks on other people. You may be really into paying for this round of tequila shots, but not everyone might be into that. It's fine to offer someone else a drink, but if they say no, accept it for what it is, don't tease them, don't ask them again, or make fun of them. Seven, always treat the restaurant or bar staff with respect. I know that can be hard if you've been waiting in line for 20 minutes and you feel someone else has cut in line and gotten served ahead of you. Keep your composure, wait for the bartender, try to seek eye contact, but don't wave with your money, don't snap with your fingers because that's just rude and impolite. Of course, you should also tip well in line with the social norms in the place you're at. In the US, for example, it's typical to tip 15 to 20%. In Germany, for example, it's not expected. Last but not least, keep your hands to yourself. Drinking will usually relax even the most guarded person's view on interpersonal space, but getting too close to someone or even touch them is a clear indicator that you've had way too much to drink. Also, a bonus tip, if you go to a bar to have a drink, don't sneak in your flask and drink from it. And if you wanna learn more when it is an appropriate occasion to use your flask, as well as flask etiquette and what not to do, please check out this video here. Also, if you're at a whiskey, wine, or beer tasting, things are a little different. And to learn more about the proper procedure and how to behave, please check out this whiskey tasting guide here. So in conclusion, drinking like a gentleman means you should not behave in a way that makes you a pain in the ass to others around you. Very simple, isn't it? In today's video, I'm wearing an outfit I would typically wear when I go to a nice bar. It consists of a jacket, which is petrol blue and double-breasted, which is part of a suit. It's a nice fresco wool combined with a blue and white striped shirt and a brown grenadine tie. Because the jacket is somewhat loud, I tone down the other colors. That includes a boutonniere that is contrasting but not overly loud, as well as a pocket square made of a handcrafted linen in an X stitch that picks up the color of the shirt. My pants are a black and off-white houndstooth that are combined with a pair of shadow stripe socks from Fort Belvedere that pick up the same colors. My penny loafers are dark brown and contrasting yet harmonious at the bottom end of my outfit and they coordinate with my dark brown grenadine tie, which you can find in our shop here, just like all of our other accessories from Fort Belvedere. Of course, I also keep on my wedding band and I also wear a pinky ring with a bloodstone. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and check out our other etiquette videos. I'm sure you will like them as well. Thank <laughs> you.